Welcome to another episode of My Not Matters here at the Dakota and brought to you by Shock Safe and Lock. I'm Jonathan Starr. Today I am joined by one of the city councilmen, Paul Pittner. Thank you for joining us today, Paul. Absolutely. Thanks for the invite, Jonathan. Absolutely. So first off, before we get going, and we're going to talk a little bit about the budget talks that are going on. But first off, let's talk about who you are. You're elected to city council in 2018, then reelected again in 2022. Um, so first off, how has that gone? How has it been being part of city council? Have everybody looking at you and talking about you, both good and bad? Yeah, um, I've got a few more gray hairs when I started <laughs> yeah, uh, than sure. when I started for sure. Um, yeah, I made the decision to run for city council back in, um, like I say, elected in 2018. I made it at the end of uh, uh, 2017, made the decision to kind of throw my hat in the ring, started right. collecting signatures. Um, was lucky enough and fortunate enough that uh, connected with enough citizens to get elected. Um, first four years went well enough. Had had some had some questions back and forth, but I felt like there was some unfinished business. Right. Um, and and there always will be. Right. Even yep. when I finish up this term, I, I I I'll say it here. I do not plan to run again. Yeah. Um, just because of of where my life is with with kids and and right. and my wife and my business and 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 the things that I want for myself. Um. But there's always always going to be some unfinished business. But it's it's gone well. It's it it's I've never been someone. I've got pretty thick skin. You know, right. I, I grew up in a big family. Grew yep. up hardworking family. They, they 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 taught me a lot of life lessons um, with the family that I grew up with, and and never take things too seriously. Never you right. know kind of water off a duck's back. You always try to take listen and, and listen to constructive criticism and conflict is good. I, I've always, I've said it during council meetings, controlled conflict is, is a good thing. That's where you see the most growth. Um, there's been, there's been meetings where we as council members don't get along. Right. There's where we have disagreements, but we always try to be respectful. And at the end of the day, you shake each other's hands. And, and that's the toughest part about this job is when you don't get your way. Right. right. And by your way, what I, what I mean by that, let me explain. Uh, kind of expound on that. That's when, when you feel you know what's best for the community or you yeah. feel like what your decision or your motion or, or, or your vote is the right vote and it doesn't pass, you swallow your pride and you move on right. and, and you go with the direction of council. And that's, that's the hardest part about this job um, when, when you have to take some of those lumps. But at the, at the end of the day, I'm one vote, you right. know, and, yeah. and, and what I think isn't always right. And, and, and vice versa. So, so again, you, you kind of pick your battles here and there, but it's, it's been a good process and I'm, I'm a huge believer in civic duty and, and this isn't the first thing that I've ever been involved in. Right. Um, so, so again, I think it's, uh, it's been a, a good experience. I think what's interesting that sometimes gets lost, uh, is your city council position. That's a part-time position. It takes full-time hours, but it's a, it's a part-time position. Like you mentioned, you have, you have a, a business that you're running. Um, uh, you're in real estate and things like that as well. Um, there's a lot you have going on. And so the amount of sacrifice that it takes to spend just dedicating more hours than what you really probably get paid for. And this is remarkable and something that shouldn't be unnoticed by citizens. <laughs> Yeah, you, you nail on the head, right? We do get compensated a little bit. It, it ends up being about eleven hundred bucks or something like that a, a month, which is nothing to scoff at, right? right. That's yep. that's that's great. But at the end of the day, I I, I I guarantee you, I lose more money than I than that eleven hundred dollars on the time it takes me away from my businesses, right? And and even my family, I'd I'd, I'd pay eleven hundred bucks just to spend more time with my kids half right. the time to, yep. with my wife. She might not like that, but <laughs> but but I, I, again, it, it it's a sacrifice, and everybody does it. Yep. across everything, every profession. So, right. so again, I appreciate you bringing up that point. Very good. So that's, you know, 2018 you're elected, but let's roll it back even a few more years than that. 10th grade, 11th grade of high school. Who was Paul? Oh man. Um, I was a high school wrestler, 10th, 11th grade. I, I don't want, I'm a, I wasn't a popular kid, but I got okay. along with everybody, man. Yeah. Um, but the way that I explain this, and this this will roll into even my family, we weren't so much a family. I was one of ten kids, right? Okay. So we weren't so much a family. My my dad farmed, worked on the railroad. They owned a car wash over on Fourth Avenue, rental properties, but they hustled, man. They were they were right. hard workers. And when we came home from work, it was it wasn't so much get your homework done. It was get something to eat, and then dad needs help. Right. Or you know you headed down to the farm. We farmed down in Harvey, where my mom was from. So wow. I mean we were it was all hands on deck. It's just yeah. it's just the way it was, and and we never questioned it. But but 
like I say, we were, uh, makes a good upbringing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, again, it made me, made me who I am at, uh, yeah. um, like I say, at 10th, 11th grade, geez, that's about the time I met my wife in high school, our high school go. sweethearts. That's we, awesome. We, we broke Did you up. go to Bishop Ryan or? No. Nope. Well, my wife went to Bishop Ryan. Okay. I was, I was the enemy. I went to minor high. <laughs> there so, you go. She was a stat for wrestling. All, she came from a, um, a, a wrestling family. All of her okay. brothers did. All of her uncles or dad, they're world-class wrestlers. Yeah. Um, and like I say, my, my brothers, a couple of my brothers wrestled. So, um, I got involved with that. That's how I met my wife. Um, went off to college. I went to NDSU. She went to okay. Moorhead. Very good. And, uh, opportunity kind of around the time I graduated from college, we both graduated from college was the time of the oil boom. We had moved to the cities after college, but with the boom going on and the housing boom, um, we uh, we decided to move back and, wow. and kind of put down roots. We, we we did not plan on being here. Okay. We were saying, hey, let's go back five, ten years. We'll see yeah. what happens. Ten years later, here we are, and with no plans of leaving. We've, we've got yeah. a great, great little. You'd be amazed at how many people come on this podcast and say they moved away, and then something got them to come back. And in this case, it's the economy. But a lot of times, it's the lure of Minot, and that's what obviously got you to stay, is that just the comfortability that you can find in Minot. A hundred percent. My family. My wife. My wife. Uh, she didn't move back willingly. I'll say okay, that. Yeah. If she watches it. I might get in trouble for saying some of stuff. But she. She. She liked the the amenities. Her. She. She's right. a runner. The the okay. running paths and all that stuff. And and that yeah. was. I took that as somewhat of a challenge, right? When my wife. Because right. and again, mine had had great things. She's from here. Loves yep. the community. Her family's here. My family's here. But, you know, she liked the things that Fargo had, that Minneapolis had to right. offer, the running paths, the the, the 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 bars, the restaurants, the the shopping, all of those things that, that might not seem to be lacking in, right? right? When we were kids, right, the only place to go eat, when you went to eat, you went and ate at Applebee's. That yeah. was the only yeah. restaurant in town. Right. Um, you know, so for so long. And, and I took it as almost a personal challenge, and that's part of the reason I got involved is that – I see the potential in Minot. Mm -hmm. I see that we have, we are a standalone community that can challenge any other community in the state right. for, for being the best. Right. Absolutely. And, and that's all in opinion. Right. But I believe we have all of the ingredients to be. I agree. One of the best communities in the country, you yeah. know? So, so again, I took it as a challenge. And that's one of the reasons I kind of even got involved with, with city council was I want to see Minot reach its full potential. Absolutely. Um, which We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I, I think it's well on its way. You just look at some of the restaurants that we've been able to pull in. You look at just the, how strong the base has become and how, how supportive it seems like uh, naturally they are of that being here. seems like Minot is a very good place. So so you got elected in 2018, and now more recently you are elected as city council president. I'm sure this is something that comes from the peers. Walk us through that a little bit. Um, yeah, so when I got re when I got reelected um, – spent, um, every time there's an election, we reorganize this council. So, right. um, president and vice president of the council. And, and basically my role is I'll serve as the, the, uh, uh, I will take charge of the meetings if the mayor's gone, but then right. also I have what, what probably is going to be part of our conversation here in the future is I have a role in the budget process right. and I, I deliver a president's letter and what I feel, whether to accept the budget, what tweaks, should be made so it is a powerful position to be in it is a, a powerful and, and a big responsibility to have right um, and i don't take that lightly so so again to have some influence into the budget because it is um it's not it's not a meeting that we just show up to <laughs> there's not just two readings of the budget and we rubber stamp it and go that's that's something that i'm very 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 much against we need to be in the weeds with right. department heads with staff you know the the ins and the outs of the organization so so 158 page document the budget is um, obviously there's a lot of money that's being allocated in it as, as it should be. We're, we're a good sized city. That's yep. a good thing. Um, you mentioned it in one of your, in one of the city council meetings, but you didn't just sit down one night and put this together. There was a lot of work that went into the process of just creating the budget. And I think it'd be really good to educate viewers on what that process is. Uh, how long, how long does this process go when you guys are putting get together a budget? Obviously there's some stuff that year over year, you just know. Yep. Uh, but there's increases that are coming, um, different things like that, that happen. That's natural part of inflation. We, we all do that. We all want to raise on the job that we're working at. It's natural that there's more money being spent. What's kind of the process that it takes to put that budget together? Man, and I'm not even going to be able to hit on all these things. I mean, it's, it's because it's as soon as as soon as this budget gets finalized yep. here, 
at our next meeting. Right. We're going to, you're going to have staff by the end of the year already rolling into projections, revenue wow. projections, um, what, what some of the major projects are, what yep. funds are available from the state and federal government. Because, you know, we, we manage about a little over $200 million yep. in this budget. That's not all local dollars. That's right. money that's allocated. It's given to us from the state or from, yep. from the federal government. Then we couple that with our local cost share to make some of these projects happen, whether it's reconstruction of 31st Avenue from Broadway to the roundabout on 13th, right? right? Okay. That wasn't all a local lift. It could be, yeah, we could absolutely pay for these things, but we know how expensive that would yeah, be. Exactly. So when we can leverage those dollars and that's another thing that the engineering staff, um, the finance department, they're all working diligently to know when these dollars are coming available. You know, even, you know, the infrastructure we have, whether it's uh, lead, um, um, lead pipes for our, our, our water system that, right. that have to be replaced. That's just, yes. it, it has to be done. Right. So how are we going to do that when you've got miles and miles and miles of that infrastructure that needs to be replaced over X amount of years? Well, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Right. So we try to piece these projects together. Um, yeah. Again, we could replace it all next year if you want. <laughs> I, I, I don't think the taxpayers of mine are going right. to like that, whether it's from the exactly. cost or the, 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 the inconvenience yes. of the roads. Right. Um, so again, we, we try to be very diligent and strategic with these dollars. Yes. Um, and it's even, you know, you, you think of led, um, transferring, um, street right. lights to led, which is a cost saving mechanism over time. These things will pay for themselves over time. So again, back to the original question, we're going to start digging into that and staff will start digging into that. And then in the springtime, that's when council really gets roped in. Okay. Um, that's when council will have our retreat, right? Usually yeah. we do it. We've done it at the Carnegie center in the last couple of years. And that's when, Council really lays out its its guidelines for the budget. What do we want to see? What what framework do we want staff to work within? Okay. Do we want and and give just a general? Hey, are, are you okay with a slight increase? Hey, do we want right. to go gangbusters and, yep. and just really knock some stuff out of the park? Do you want to see a major decrease, a slight decrease? Do you want to hold it flat? Right. And that's when staff really starts to take our input. Because I'm not going to tell Dan Jonason, the former public works director, or Lance right. Meyer, you know, or, or Jason Sorensen, how to build a road, right? How to treat water. Mm -hmm. That's their job. Absolutely. Um, so again, they know how to do it. They're the professionals on it, and we entrust that. Um, right. I'm not going to go in to my doctor and question what he's <laughs> telling me. Um, when he gives me a diagnosis, you know, your right. second opinion is great. We can yeah. do that, but we have professionals and we pay them for a reason. Right. So when they start to construct their budget and then we go on budget tours and that, that takes place, you know, May, June, some time frame in there. We really get into the, in the workings of, of what they're asking for in their budget, what they've already cut from their budget, what they think they, they need, you know, whether that's manpower, whether that's equipment, whether, and, and to see what they're working with, you know, I okay. mean, the snowblower that was working up at the, uh, the airport here a couple of years ago, I think was from the seventies. Wow. You know, so when you look, and, and that's not something that we bought new in the seventies, that's yeah. something we got secondhand okay. in the nineties, you <laughs> right. know, and, and we're, we're piecemealing it together to try yeah. to make it work, to try to be diligent with taxpayer dollars, you know, to think that, that every vehicle and every piece of machinery is brand new for the city of Minot is, right. is not the case, not accurate, not the case. So, and once we go through that, um, as the president of the council, then I get roped into the department head meetings when we really start to get down to where do we need to be and, 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 and even the mayor, you know, and the leadership of council, we really get roped into the department head meetings with the, the city manager and where are we at? Mm -hmm. Where, how do we cross the finish line with where we need to be right. with what the goals have been set by the council? So again, it is, it's a long process. And let me, let me be clear too: the budget tours, um, uh, uh, the um, the budget workshops, those are open meetings. Those okay. are posted. Those are open to the public. That was a question I had. Every taxpayer has the right to come and be at those meetings. Um, and I and, and again, I get it. It's busy. I understand. It's it's hard for me as an elected person to be there. That's my job. And it's right. hard for me to make the time for that. So I, I'm not trying to be naive and say you can be there, but right. if you can, and if it is a priority to you, be a part of that process because we want to hear from people right? Um, and hear those perspectives. I'm, I'm a gutter guy, yeah. you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a city planner. I'm not, I'm not this, this, I didn't even play Sims as a kid. I don't want to build a city, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. So, so again, we want to see these people come in. We want to see residents be a part of this process and give their opinions right. from start to finish. You know, we hear this, 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 
phrase. See how the sausage is made, right? right yeah. We want to see it from from start to finish. So again, that and, yeah. and that that is open to the public. Right. I think that's really important to make note of. I know you've made it note of it in the city council meetings as well. But there are ways you can be involved beyond just voicing your opinion at a city council meeting. Mm-hmm. You're able to be involved in those tours and stuff like that as well. Well, it sounds like a very uh, intense process. Something that is soon begins as soon as this is approved. That's incredible. It's a year round thing. Yep. The budget's always on the mind. Um. We are going to move into a couple things. In a minute, we'll move into a couple things specific in this year's budget that we can break down. But there's a couple things I wanted to talk high level before we jumped into that that have been addressed at a couple of the city council meetings. Um, we'll start off with the, with the fun one, this in-property tax deal that's going around. Um, obviously, the, the, the citizen that pays $12,000 a year in property tax is like, that sounds like a really great idea to me. Mm-hmm. Um Maybe they don't have an understanding of what that $12,000 actually does. Um, maybe, you know, whatever it might be. And so it sounds very interesting. Now you come from the different side where you may pay something similar in property tax, but you're also like, hey, wait a minute though. I know where those dollars go. I know what that affects. So I would love to hear your opinion on the in-property tax measure. Um, something that comes up often with it is the local control aspect of it um, and losing that. Are I don't need to know if you're for or against that measure specifically, just more the concept in general. Are you for ending the local property taxes, how that affects local government? Yeah, no. So it's, again, that's, I'm, I'm all about letting the people choose. Okay, yeah, right? Absolutely. Get it on the ballot. Let, 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 let the voters right. talk. And that's why I think, you know, um, I'm fine with it getting on the ballot and, yep. and, and people and right. So right now it's, it's, it's collecting signatures. Right. It's not an initiated measure at Absolutely. this point, you know? So right. once it becomes initiated measure, I have to be very careful because as an elected official, even with the school bond issue, when, when that was, when that was circulating, when that was on the ballot, right. Mm-hmm. We cannot tip the scales as elected officials and say, vote for this or do not vote for that. Makes sense. So, so again, we have to be careful with that. Um, at this point, I understand, like I say, I understand where those revenue streams are, right? And we talk about even with replacing it with oil reserves and, and, mm-hmm. and, and legacy fund dollars. My fear is that when does that money run out? I want my right. kids to stay here. I want yeah. my kids to, 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 to make mine at home. Whether they leave or not, I want them to have the same vision that I had that it's okay to come back. There's, there is, right. there, there is a, a, a place to call home here. Absolutely. Um, and, and again, when we see the, the shift of, of oil and gas to renewable energies, what does the future hold? No one knows. No, they don't. And so again, that's, that's some of my fear with that. You know, when it comes down to local control, you know, we, a couple of years ago, when I first got elected 2018, you have kind of those aha moments when you mm-hmm. get in there and we start, talking about what the cost of government really is. Right. Well, when the boom was happening and sales tax was sky high, we could pay for things with sales tax. Right. Well, that's not, that's not a for sure thing. And right. when we went from, you know, getting $15 million a year, whatever it was in a per penny mm-hmm. to 8 million, 9 million. Well, that's got to come from somewhere. We were right. lying to ourselves as, as elected officials and citizens, what the cost of government really was. Mm-hmm. Well, when the bottom fell out, we had to replace that. We had to replace it with a, a consistent revenue stream. And, right. and again, we can sit there and say the, the state will replace that. If it's $28 million, they'll give you $28 million a year, and, which is great. But when, when we're faced with challenges as a community, how do we address those? You know, flood control, NAS, you know, mm-hmm. those are projects that we're funding a, a good portion of locally. Yes, right. we have a huge, huge lift from the state and mm-hmm. some from the federal government, which is great. And those help those projects go. But when we delay those projects or we can't ensure that those projects will cross the finish line in a timely manner, you talk about, you know, increases in flood flood uh, uh, insurance policies, you know, and then if you talk about shifting some of that into fees or sales tax, right? And we'll talk about that a little bit too, but you shift that from sales tax. Well, when you are a lower income family, yeah. you actually spend more money on consumables than you mm-hmm. do on services. Services right. are not... Right, tax. subject to property t- or a sales tax. tax excuse yeah. me, goods and services are so. Some people can say it's a it it it, it actually is is more detrimental to lower income right. households to have an increase in sales tax versus having property tax, which in my opinion is more equitable. Right, um, because then you can invest in your and, and ensure that you have good police, good fire, good roads. Right, uh, one of the things um, that we talked about at the last. Uh, council meeting was there was a citizen who came said 
you know, where's the, the hub city funding dollars mm-hmm. from the, the state? Where is this money? We're not, not accounted for in the budget. Well, I know for a fact that individual has been told several times by our finance director, how to, where to find it in the budget. And I have it. I mean, it's, there's, it's, it's audited by the state. We right. have to keep a report. All yeah. of those dollars are accounted for. Um, and the majority of what it goes towards next year is, um, road improvements. Okay. You know, and because that's the number one in our, in our, um, citizen survey, Want the number one priority is roads, roads and infrastructure. What they want to see invested in, um, I personally think you know again, the roads can always be better. They can <laughs> always be better, but that's that's where we as citizens and elected officials say, what standard do we want to do we want to maintain? Yeah. Do right. we want you know a ninety percent? Do we want an eighty percent? Right. Are we okay with a seventy percent? And that's up to citizens, right? right? That's up and that's up to the council. That's where we take those citizen surveys and we apply those to what we want the budget to look like and where we want dollars to go. Um, because in reality, in order to maintain what we have and actually close the gap in the, uh, the um, backlog of road projects, mm-hmm. we're still about $4 million short, wow. but we are attacking that. So we put some more right. money towards it last year and we've maintained that in this year's budget. But again, with some of those hub city funding dollars, we're able to close those gaps. Um, so again, but then we can also maintain, you know, with property tax, good school systems, right? you know, which increase property values. It, it not only is a benefit for your students, but it's, that's jobs. It creates an employer. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you have a state university that churns out uh, teachers like nobody's business, speech pathologists right. that can actually have a job to stay here and we can maintain the people that are coming and becoming trained professionals in our community. Um, so I think it's a good thing. You know, Absolutely. I think it's a good thing and, and, and it, it can be debated. I get it. And, and, and a whole nother argument I've heard, and I'll go off on a tangent here is that, you know, that's no. why we fought the revolutionary war. Yeah. It's unfair property tax. Right. No, we fought for taxation without representation. We didn't yeah. have a place in British parliament. Right. You have representation. Yeah. My phone number is 701-500-3500. Right. You can call me. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's, there is a, 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 a citizen portal on our website. You can call staff. You know, one of the individuals that came up and spoke about, you know, being on a fixed income and, and not sure how they're going to afford it. Yeah. I saw, I saw Damon Drews, the assistant city uh, assessor walk up to those individuals. And I, I kind of had a good idea what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but afterwards I, I talked to Damon. I said, Damon, can I ask you what you handed them? He said, I handed them a homestead of credit application. Gotcha. A lot of people don't know about these resources. Gotcha. He says, he says, I'm going to make a bigger sign for it outside of our office. Yeah. He says, we might have our, our, our PIO push that information out that right. if your income's under $70,000 and, and mm-hmm. if you meet these requirements to apply for these programs, there are programs in place, whether wow. it be through the government, the, the, the local or state or federal government that can help alleviate some of these issues. And, mm-hmm. and I can't imagine what it's like right. to stress about being priced out of my home. I don't yeah. want that no. on anybody. But again, staff is there to be a resource, not only to us, but right. to citizens. You call them up, they'll answer They'll answer your questions. They will get back to you. They are great. We have great, great, great staff. Really do. So so again, that's they're, they're, they're a resource, not only for us, but again, for citizens. If you have questions or concerns, call them up. They have they have no problem reaching out. I've, I've gone to people's houses with staff to answer questions, whether it be about, you know, from the engineering department or whether it be from, you know, sanitation and they're great. Right. They are great. World-class. So take advantage of that for sure. Um, and that, that act that you, that you can do use to get reduced taxes. If you qualify, definitely people should take advantage of that. So, um, that's the end local property tax. Something else that's come up, um, in a couple of the meetings, um, was when there was a few questions about the president's letter that you put out concerning the budget. Um, and there was a statement that you made and I thought it was interesting at the time of it. And I just wanted to ask you about it. You've said you felt like the budget was not socialistic, but you felt that it was progressive. Yep. And if you go and you look at those terms, uh, at least the modern day version of those terms with everything that's been going on, they would be closely related. Um, and I didn't really feel like that was the intent of it, but obviously I wanted to hear from you. What did you mean by that statement? What, what did you mean by progressive really? But what I mean by progressive is we can absolutely, John, if you want to go back to 1997, 2000, when right. there's really nothing going on yeah. and we've got an Applebee's and right. we're happy to have an Applebee's. Heck yeah, let's do it. We can go back to that when property right. taxes are low and we're not recruiting businesses, we're not supporting entrepreneurs and we're not supporting our local businesses right. and citizens. And we have one high school that's got yep. portables around. I, you know, we're even working in real estate. I've, I've given tours to prospective doctors um, 
oil execs. And, hey, I want to buy a house in his neighborhood. Can I drive by the schools? And you can only see two sides of Jim Hill because it's surrounded by portables right. because of the overcrowding. We can go back to that. Yeah. Or we can be progressive mm-hmm. in the sense of we can look towards the future. Forward thinking. And forward thinking. And how do we make our community not better just today but right. tomorrow but for our kids and the next generation? I don't want my kids to look at me and say, Dad, what the heck were you thinking? Right. You know, when I make some of these decisions, I'm always, I always have that, that, that little tidbit and that little fear in the back of my mind that I'm, I'm doing a disservice to my kids and the next generation right. by, by, by holding back. Um, mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong. I, 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 by no means do I want to go out and spend money and go gangbusters like right. that, but I want to be strategic and I mm-hmm. want to be smart and intentional with those dollars um, that we're spending. So again, you know, socialism, I'm not a socialist. Right. I'm not, um, I had a good conversation with, with, uh, one of the individuals after that meeting yeah. and, um, realized there might be a pot calling the kettle black a little bit on some <laughs> of these things. So, yeah. so again, I think, it, it, I think if we just sit down again, when we have yep. controlled conflict yes, and it doesn't just take place at a dais and a podium right. and we actually have a conversation, we can realize we actually have the same goals in mind. Right. We might have a different way of getting there a hundred percent. There's you, you asked for a recipe for chicken salad. You're going to get, 10 different recipes, right? right. Yep. But we all have the same goal. We want what's best for mine. We want to attract businesses. We want to take care of the people here. Absolutely. Um, but again, we all have different opinions on how to get there. Right. Yep. For sure. That's a very good answer there on that. One more thing I wanted to ask you about specifically before we get into the meat of the budget is um, September 5th, and it's not even just September 5th, the last couple of meetings we've had, some people show up, which has been good. That's something that you've mentioned uh, during the HRC um, talks. Like, I wish this many people when we had full houses in the cham- chambers, I wish this many po- people would show up for the budget budget meetings. And this year, I, I can't compare it to previous years, but we've had a decent amount. It, it maybe could have been better on some, some days, but we've had a decent amount of people show up for the budget. Um, but one of the things you said was, um, thank you for what you said. I've also had people reach out to me personally and and um, in support, some in support and some not in support. And I guess the question is, does do you feel like that statement discourages people from showing up in that there's you want people to show up, but there's also people that are reaching out personally? Does that weigh in how you view the people's answers? Um, if you can un- kind of understand what I'm asking there. Um, no, I at the end of the day, I want people at every meeting, not yeah. just budget meetings, you know, Learn about your government. Learn right. what's going on. I mean, you'd be surprised of how many things you, you go to a meeting in the middle of the year and you learn something new about right. your community, what's you happening. Um, but I, I don't want people to ever feel discouraged from coming to a meeting or coming mm-hmm. to a, 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 a budget meeting that might not even be at the council chambers, but right. might be in a finance conference room out at Public Works because yes. we're going to go on a tour. Or we're going to get on a bus and go to the landfill right. and, and tour the infrastructure, that improvements that are being made there. Um so no, I, I never want people to feel discouraged. I always want people to show up, whether they, and again, voice their opinions. Um, but it's, and, and I don't mean this to be a slight at anybody. Yep. I don't, but it's really easy to be a Monday morning quarterback. And yep. that goes for me as well. I, yep. I do that in my life as well. But when we show up at the finish line and we say, I don't like this, right? it's like, I get it, but do you don't understand some of it. The I'm process. not saying, I'm not, again, I'm not pointing finger. I'm, I'm talking about mm-hmm. over overarching but again, when we show up at the end of the day, well, why'd you do that? Well, because of this, 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 and this. And we talked about it at this meeting and this meeting and this meeting. Um, so again, that it, it, it is frustrating, right. but that's, that's how it is. That's yeah. how it always has been. That's how it always will be. Um, you know, we televise our meetings. There's, right. there's meeting minutes. I mean, there's, there's, it's out there. It's right. out there. I mean, it's on, you know, local channels. It's on YouTube. It's yes. on Facebook. So, so again, no, I, I never, I hope, I hope I'm answering your question. I never want people to feel discouraged from coming to a meeting. I, I, I want them to be a part of the process, but I want them to be the pro- process start to finish as much right. as they can be. Or even if there is a meeting, you want to reach out to a council member. You want to reach out to a staff member and say, hey, I wasn't able to be at this meeting. What went on? Right. What did you guys talk about? Yeah. That's our job. Right. It is important. And you guys are very, very uh, receptive to that. Uh, From my experience, you guys try to get back as soon as possible. So I think that's important for people to hear about. All right. Enough of the the top level, high level stuff. Let's jump into the budget a little bit. So a couple of the probably things that people care about the most is the one of the proposed things, suggestions was a half percent sales tax increase. Um, It was mentioned that you would estimate 28 percent of sales tax comes from outside of Ward County. 
Um, we've already kind of talked about this a little bit, how this probably hurts lower income families more than it does uh, the regular, but, but kind of just walk through why, why we feel like the half percent is important to the budget uh, this year. So that, just to be clear, that is not proposed to be a part of this budget. Okay. That is, there's, there's no increase mm -hmm. in, in sales tax. What we have though, is that we have, again, some delayed projects over the years, right? Our, our police station has been a police station slash city hall, former uh, fire department for many, many, yeah. many, many years. That building is, it needs attention, right? right? It does. And, it, and, it, and it, it's an asset to us. It's part of our infrastructure. We need to make sure, and we need to make sure that our, our public safety, whether it's police or fire, have the resources available to them to be the best they can be, to recruit the best people they can be, to retain the best uh, quality individuals that they can. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's something that's, again, it's a national trend, but it's also something that we struggle with locally is retaining quality um, uh, public safety individuals in the police department. Well, when, and again, so your experience out there on the road is, is getting younger and younger and you're losing that experience. Um, that's not something that we want to see, right? right? So how do we do that? We invest in those departments and, those investments are not cheap. Mm -hmm. um, my my thought, right when I when in the letter I proposed staff or I, I wanted to direct staff to put together what it would look like mm -hmm. to get it on the ballot, right for citizens to choose whether or not they want to support that half cent sales tax that would go towards um, public safety, right. and that would be for again, because we're going to be faced with a decision here really quickly. In one of the upcoming meetings, we're going to get a presentation by an independent study that was done on the existing uh, police station, you know, okay. former city hall, whether that building is feasible to even be maintained and remodeled and, mm -hmm. you know, to, to fit the needs of our uh, police department, or if we need to look at another location altogether, right. which regardless, we're not talking about a couple hundred thousand dollars. We're talking mm -hmm. about millions of dollars. Right. Um, and it's a long-term investment for our community. But I don't think we can put that on the backs of taxpayers. Right. I think going the sales tax route to dedicate a half a cent sales tax um, for a certain amount of time with the sunset very clearly written out. That's how I'd like to see it mm -hmm. um, to handle some of those large expenditures that are coming down the road. Right. right. You know, and we saw what we, what happened. We, we delayed fire station five for a year because of COVID yeah. and we saw the exponential increase millions upon millions of dollars between that, the city, uh, city hall retaining wall, you know, that yep. ended up costing taxpayers. Right. Um, so that's why I think it's, it's, you need to be live in the present and see right. what the challenges are. And we need to attack those challenges versus saying, we'll deal with it later. We'll deal with it later. Right. <laughs> I did that on my own house and I had to fix <laughs> some sheetrock because, I could, I'll do the roof next year. I'll do the right, roof next yep. year. Well, I got a new roof this next year because when we got a heavy rain in the spring, I had pop scenes in my sheetrock, right? Yeah. So it created more work and more expense for myself. And you right. put that on a, on a, and that was, you know, that, that, that boils down to a few hundred bucks, yep. you know, and, and, and extra expenditures versus in the city, we're talking millions of dollars. Right. So again, I just want to see that proposal and I want the citizens to vote for that. If they yeah. don't, if they don't see that as a need and they don't see that as a priority, then, hey. Find a different funding source. We'll find a different funding source. We'll make do with what we have. Mm -hmm. But I think the citizens have the right to vote on that yeah. sales tax. I think something that's interesting is we've had the city council or, or city hall, sorry, city hall remodeled or moved really. Um, and now you're talking about the police station. Um, recently we had fire station five open up. The, that's really on the border because that's been a couple years in the process. Um, but you see a lot of this happening. Do you feel like that any time that there was a little bit of just like passiveness with some of this stuff? And so we're now feeling a little bit of that in the current day um, where if this had been thought out previously, say, I'm not trying to call anybody out, but just in the last 20 years, say, not trying to pinpoint it anywhere that some of this could have been better mitigated. Again, easy to be a Monday morning quarterback, right? Yeah. You know, we just talked about that. And so, again, I'm not going to throw shade at anybody. Um, and there will be decisions that we are not addressing right. that we're going to look back 20 years and say, why didn't you guys start this? You know, yeah. even you look at the school right. bond issue, right? They, they came with the school bond issue, I think it was in 2012. And and don't quote me on those years. It was right, back, right around the time I moved back, 2012, 2013. And it failed, right? Mm -hmm. To do a new high school. And, and, yep. they, and so they, they, they scaled it back. They did, a, you know, they did John Hoven, a couple additions, Longfellow, Perkett. That school would be bought and paid for by now yep. had we passed it right. back then right. at, at an exponentially lower cost. You know, who yeah. would have thought we would have a pandemic and an right. oil boom and bust? Yep. Um, so, again, do I think that some of those issues, that there was some passiveness? Absolutely, because that's the mindset of the Midwest. That's the yeah. mindset of, of my parents. That was, hey, if you 
If you can't afford, if you can't pay for it cash, you don't do it. Right. And that's yep. one thing that the city does. They, we save and we save and we save until we can pay for something. Mm-hmm. When we could be using special assessments, we could be bonding, you know, right. but we have to be very careful with the bonding aspect because we've got NAWS and we've got flood control, two of the, mm-hmm. two of the largest infrastructure projects in the history of the state going on at the same time right. that we're trying to balance, right? So again, we have to be careful on how how, how, how thin we spread ourselves because we have to ensure that we, we maintain our, our, our bonding capacity for those projects um but yeah i I do believe but again monday morning quarterback and if i was in that position 20 years ago i might have done the same thing but also who would have thought that we would have had a boom you know like we did and we would have seen the growth that we had going from i always remember when i was growing up and people from minot how big is minot it's about thirty four thousand. yeah it's about thirty four thousand. right now we're fifty thousand. right so so again we have to invest in that infrastructure and we have, we have done a lot of that. A lot of the stuff, even below ground, you know, the trunk infrastructure out to Southwest Minot, knowing that the hospital, knowing that that would be a quadrant of the city, there is water capacity and, and, and infrastructure to handle that growth. And mm-hmm. now we need to see that happen, which we are starting to see. Right. Um, so yeah, again, some of those issues, but fire station five, you know, again, I remember when 27th Avenue or 27, yeah, 27th Street going up there, that was that was grassland, right? There was right. nothing up there. Yep. Eagles Landing, none of that stuff was right. there. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the Y used to be out of town when I was a kid. Yes. You know, um, the air base was... Long ways away. Long ways away. You know, right. there was none of that stuff up there. Pheasants yeah. Run, Stonebridge, you know, not far from where we're sitting right here. None of that right. stuff was here, these apartments. Yeah. Um, so again, it's it's hard to predict the future. Nobody has right. a crystal ball. Yes. Yeah. You know, back 20 years ago, they might have said, hey, we're 34,000 now. Maybe we're going to be 31,000 in 20 years. Right. Yep. It could have went either way. So, yep. so again, it's and difficult. It's a fair point. I think the important thing is that regardless that there's learning from history because otherwise it'll repeat itself right uh, yeah and so how do we look forward to the next 10 years 20 years and making sure that things are you can't predict you can't predict a boom you know who, who knows maybe there'll be a bunch of iron that's found well, to that to that point remember when the boom happened jonathan and everybody said this is going to go on for 15 years this is going to go on for well we Technically, for if we were listening to that advice, which yeah. we, I think a lot of us were at the time with right. putting a lot of our, our, our um, costs into sales tax, we were expecting that money to be there for 15 years. Right, right. Well, then it wasn't, and we had to adjust. Yep, yep. Great, great point. Very good. Yeah, I remember I moved here in 2008, and house prices were a little bit cheaper then. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. incredible to see how much that they have increased. Um, so going back to the, uh, ta- uh, the budget, the second thing uh, – with the property tax, there was a small mill levy increase. So I kind of was looking at this. It's a 0.63 increase in the mill levy. But what's interesting about it, and just want to get your feedback on this, is you see a decrease uh, in the levies um, for the amount that's being paid towards bonds and stuff, which would be expected because you know it's being paid down. So then those mills are, if you would, reallocated to areas of other spending, um, operational spending. Um, and then there's a 0.63% or 0.63 mill levy increase there. Um, the, the question that I have on this is people are very concerned about property taxes. We've talked about the property tax petition. We've talked about all this. It presents as a 0.63 uh, mill levy increase, but really it would be more than that. It's in two or with the year over year. Why? Why are we having such a substantial, really substantial increase in the mill levies uh, when you really look at how it's d- divided up? Is this something that we should expect year year over year? What's, what's your feedback on that? You know, and again, I haven't, we haven't dove quite into next year's budget, yep. but we're going to have another difficult one next year, probably even more so because of some of the COVID dollars that are going away. Yeah, We're going to have to, again, hold the line. And, and again, I don't want to see an increase. Nobody yeah. ever does, right? We'd love right. to be able to do more with less. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, we can't lie to ourselves about what it costs to, to run government. You know, right. you know, staffing fire station five was, was a big cost, yeah. you know, things like that. Those, 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 those investments into, you know, our, our roads, um, and, 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 and maintaining those things. Those are all things that, deferred maintenance that are now catching up with us. Right. You know, even, even the investment into city hall and, and moving, moving into a new building, you know, one of the things that was cited at our last meeting, you know, a hundred and some thousand dollars in HVAC repairs. 
what are we supposed to do? Right. You know, I mean, we're just not going to have HVAC in the Don't buildings. Need that, yeah. We, 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 we can't. And then, we, then, 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 then what do you do? You know, right. then it's deferred maintenance and then it becomes a more expensive problem. No, I, I hope that, that citizens don't expect that year over year. I hope that we can mitigate that and, and find solutions. And, and again, mm -hmm. look to grow the pie. That's why one of the recommendations I made was to restore funding for some of our economic development arms so right. that we can, have more investment from outside businesses. We can grow the businesses that are here. Mm -hmm. Have a good entrepreneurial ecosystem is something that we talk about so that people are staying here, investing here, right. um, having a larger tax base. Yeah. Um, those are things that we all need to uh, need to be mindful of. You know, we had a construction project with Trinity that went off the books. That, mm -hmm. That's going off the books because they're now function as a nonprofit and it's a great asset for our community. But right. As, as, as a revenue stream, you know, then you'll have some yeah. buildings downtown that'll come back online. Right. Um, so there's, 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 there's so many things that are going on behind the scenes, you mm -hmm. know, the, these, these changes and these shifts. Um, so again, to, to answer your question, why is that? Because it costs, it costs money to yeah. run government. It costs money to, to invest in, you know, we have even, I, I'd have to, I'd have to go back and phone a friend on how many even police positions we have approved, but not even funded. Wow. Because in reality, we're probably not going to have them hired because of the difficulty and the turnover that we're seeing. Yeah. Um, just national trends and whatnot. Right. But we need those approved so that if we can be fully staffed to ensure that we have proper public safety for our citizens, those positions are there. Right. We can dip into reserves or, or whatever it might be to mm -hmm. get us across the line um, until next year's budget. But, but no, uh, again, it, it's difficult, but yep. I, I, I have, I have full faith in our staff that, that they're going to carry out the vision of, of, of council and, and understand that we're only doing what we feel we need to do. Right. Um, there, are there some wants in there? Always, yeah. always, uh, there always are because some of those wants are things that are going to, pay dividends in the end, right? You know, investing into some of these projects, investing into city hall, right? I mean, mm -hmm. a want or a need, we, yeah, maybe we can defer that another couple of years, but what happens when the wall gives way and it, we have right. an insurance claim and somebody gets hurt or yeah. there's damage or, or whatever it might be, you know, station five, when, when someone can't respond to a fire adequately in enough time because they have to go on the bypass or go around traffic right. because we don't have proper uh, fire protection throughout the city. Right. So, so again, it's, that's a tricky question to, to answer too, just because again, because of all of those moving parts, yeah. you've got a few hundred employees, oh, you've man. got, you know, you've got however many different departments within the city that are all trying to carry their own right. and, and, and make sure they're doing the best with what resources they have. So yeah, absolutely. If somebody wants to get a headache, they can read the uh, full 158 pages. It, yeah, get it, get after it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really uh, spins your mind a little bit. Um, Another interesting point, and this is really in closing, just finishing up the budget, is you also have the factor of the houses. I think there's like a 10 million increase of property value that, that goes up. So basically, it's just interesting to see the breakdown of the taxes, how you have an increase in levy, uh, mill levy, you have an increase in property tax or property values as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to trust that the assessor is doing a good job. People always dispute that. And I believe that if you truly dispute it, you, you can take that up with the assessor. Yep. There's, there's avenues. So there's, there's, there's a uh, board of equalization that you can either go through the city and the county. There's, there's multiple opportunities for you to uh, dispute your tax assessment, but the tax assessors are also audited by the state and they have to be within 90 some percent accuracy. Gotcha. You know, when they're looking at comps, you know, this was a debate last year, I believe, and year after year, right? It's like, mm -hmm. I didn't do anything to my house, but it's like, yeah, but when your neighbors, it's even in real estate, I yeah. don't care what you think your house is worth. What are the houses in your neighborhood? What right. are the, the similar houses to you selling for? That's mm -hmm. what dictates that 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 valuation. Right. Um, not your opinion. And um, it seems like when they when you go to sell your house, it's, it's a back and forth there because when you go to sell, your, you're like the tax assessor really said it's only worth that much. Well, it's <laughs> that, but it's also hey, my house isn't worth this much. My house, you guys are a bunch yeah. of crooks. My right. house isn't worth this much. But then you see their house on the market <laughs> six months later for fifty thousand dollars above what, what it's assessed for. So <laughs> again, I yeah. you take it with a grain of salt. It's, right. it's, it's a circular argument, and yeah, I get it. it. I get it. I'm I'm, I'm 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 the same way, right? Like right. I want course, my house naturally. to be I want my house to be assessed low and sell high. Just right. just like everybody. So yep. I get it. 
it's definitely a fun deal. Well, really appreciate you coming on today. Any any closing words of wisdom or anything like that that you have for us that you want to leave with us? No, we've got another. Uh, come see how the sausage is made. Not only yeah. at the next meeting, but when we start that process next year, um, be a part of it. I mean, that's the biggest thing. We want people to be a part of it. I I don't want to do this job forever. I, I again, right. like I said, I'll say it again. My wife can 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 hold me to this. I do not plan on running again because again, I've got other priorities in my life. But we need more people to step up and be a part of solutions and and bring their ideas and 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 again feel the uh, feel compelled to be a part of part of the process and and be a leader in the community. That's one thing that we need and understand how great of a community we have and how great of staff we have, how great of citizens we have, because we really do and they get it. And MyNet, I think, has positioned itself better than it has in my entire life to be competitive, not only across the state, but across the country for attracting businesses, attracting uh, individuals to live here, work here, play here um, for, for a number of reasons. So again, I'm excited about my, my final time on council, my final few years on council, but just, the rest of my life because right. my nut is my nut is primed to really be magic. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So. For sure. Well, really do appreciate you coming on uh, to those that are listening. Make sure you show up beginning of October for the next city council meeting. That should be one of the final readings there on the budget. Um, and then like councilman Pittner said, show up next year or in the coming months as the budget talks begin again and be part of those tours, see what actually happens in this city. Um, so Thank you for coming on. Thank you for watching another edition of My Not Matters here at the Dakotan and brought to you by Shock Safe and Lock. I'm Jonathan Starr. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Go to stop by mydakotan.com. Drop in your email. Stay up to date with all the latest news that we have going on in My Not. Thank you and have a great day.